Welcome back to News 46. Chili lovers and chefs from all over town participated in the VFW Post Chili Cook-Off on Saturday. We had 10 entries into the Chili Cook-Off and we had two, our three wonderful guys that won. Uh, one lady, two guys and one lady. And uh, we had a wonderful turnout and um, people coming out to sample all the, the good chili that was made. And we just had a good time. You're also selling it for $4 a bowl, and then it was only $10 to enter, huh? $10 to enter, $4 a bowl to uh, taste it, and, uh, and it all went to the building uh, fund. Tell me about the building fund. The building fund is to help us finish the new addition that we have going on at the VFW Post, and we're building a new bar, and the new addition with a new walk-in and everything for the VFW Post. Can anybody donate? Anybody can donate, and they can just drop it off at the VFW. And how many people do you think you serve today? Oh, I think we we did about maybe 40. Good job. What a wonderful event. It was a great event, and I thank everybody for coming out. Chili's an old-time recipe of mine. I, I think what makes it special is the chuck steak I put in it. I ground it chuck steak, mm -hmm. uh, coarse ground it, yeah. and then I cook I some on the barbecue and then cut it up real dice it up real small and of course the chilies that I put in it and fresh chilies have you been cooking for years a lot of time long long time yeah for the VFW have you ever done a chili cook-off before no, never never done any kind of cook-off before are you a veteran yes I am thank you for your service you're welcome well, they said it won first place. <laughs> Surprised me. So. You gave back your winnings, didn't you? Yes, I did, to the building fund. Can you tell me about your recipe? Um, dark red kidney beans, hamburger, garlic, onion, uh, tomatoes, chili powder. Number 10, right? Yes. All right. <laughs> Congratulations. Can you tell me, have you ever entered a chili cook-off before? Uh, the company that I used to work for, uh, they had a, they started a chili cook-off contest, and I entered it and won first place in it, too. <laughs> that was about uh, 12 years ago. Let's join Alicia Cook with your entertainment this week. In your entertainment this week, David Bowie's funeral is set to take place in his adopted home of New York. While details have yet to be announced, Bowie's funeral is expected to be attended by friends, including Mick Jagger, Bono, and Paul McCartney. A tribute concert will be held at New York's Carnegie Hall on March 31st with Cindy Lauper and The Roots, the first acts announced, with one British paper claiming McCartney, Jagger, and Eldon John may now head the bill of the already sold out event, which would likely end up being televised. Bowie Tribute Nights took place in Sydney and Melbourne this week, with events also due to take place in Auckland. Next month's Brit Awards will also pay tribute to Bowie, with Chairman Max Losada promising to honor the visionary and groundbreaking work of one of our greatest icons. February's Grammy Awards are also expected to honor Bowie's music. David Bowie died Sunday night at the age of 69, two days after his birthday and the release of his final album, Black Star, his 25th studio recording. David Morgalis, who works steadily on the stage and screen, including roles in Ghostbusters and The Sopranos, died Monday. He was 78 years old. His face was instantly recognizable from dozens of films and TV shows, including 1984's Ghostbusters, in which he played the mayor of New York. He repeated the role in the 1989 sequel. His big screen career also included appearances in Ace Ventura Pet Detective, Brighton Beach Memoirs, and A Most Violent Year. On the small screen, he was recognizable for parts on several TV shows, including The Sopranos as Tony Soprano's lawyer Neil Mink, Northern Exposure, Law and & Order, and Touched by an Angel. During the Los Angeles Football Club's presentation last week, actor-comedian Will Ferrell climbed onto the stage at the Los Angeles downtown train station's historic concourse with chair in hand, sat down between Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti and Peter Goober, and then interrupted Mia Ham Garcapera, another owner, as she addressed the gathering of media and supporters. Ham Garcapera, one of women's soccer's most 
prominent figures, then announced that Farrell, a Southern California native whose family has long been involved in the sport, was the latest addition to an impressive LAFC ownership group that now numbers 25. This is no joke, Farrell said when he stepped to the dais. I'm actually a member of this fine ownership group, and it's very exciting for me. I've never been a part owner of anything. Mm, I'm still part owner of an 84 Toyota Camry with my brother. <laughs> Pat Harrington, the popular comedian and voiceover talent who made a lasting impact as Superintendent Dwayne Schneider on the hit sitcom One Day at a Time, has died. Harrington was 86 years old. In the latest box office total, Star Wars The Force Awakens will overtake 2009's Avatar to become the highest grossing film in North American history. The Disney film has so far made $758.2 million in North America in less than three weeks of release. The Force Awakens will pass the $760.5 million mark that James Cameron's 3D sci-fi smash made in its run six years ago. I am Alicia Cook, and that is your entertainment this week. All right, thanks, Alicia. The Seroptimists are having another bunco night. Tanya Brahm explains. It's that time of year again. Seroptimus International Pahrump Valley is having a Valentine's bunker night, February 12th at 6 o'clock at Nye Communities Coalition. It's $10 per person to get in, and it's more fun than anything. It's the cheapest evening of entertainment you can have because we always have raffle prizes, and we uh, there's always food, uh, finger foods, but everybody who goes to it just has an absolute blast, and we have new people who want, have been now asking, when are you doing it, when are you doing it? So we're doing it February 12th. It's a Friday night. Yeah, we usually do Friday, 6 o'clock. Nye Communities Coalition, 1020 uh, Wilson. Uh, everybody knows where it is. It's in the big uh, activities room. So please come and join us. If you want to call for more information, call either, I would say call Liz, Liz Frazier at 702-340-4718. She's one of the co-chairs. Um, Cecilia's usually at work. So please come and join us and have a blast. For people who don't know, what is Bunko? Bunko is a dice game, other than craps. You play it like cards, you have to, you have to match up. And it's very, very simple. It's a really easy game and you go around the table and people move around. So it's very, very social mm -hmm. because we've had up to 10 tables and two people are always moving. Yeah. So you get to play with all of the other people that are there. And it's, it's easy. The rules are all laid out right from the beginning. And the best part about it, it's easy so you can chit chat back and forth and not feel as though you're missing out on something. Is it a fundraiser? It, this is a fundraiser for Seroptimus International, Prump Valley. And Seroptimus means best for women. Mm -hmm. And we do, uh, all of our programs are based towards women and children in our community and in our country and around the world. For more information on Seroptimus? You can call me at 702-845-4748. Tanya Brum, I'm a charter member. And that's coming up too is our anniversary. I guess we got to play some bunko. I guess so. Um, Noah told me that it's for middle-aged and older people, so I don't know if you're allowed I'm to out. go. Oh, I'm out. Oh darn it! <laughs> and I'm not sure if it's just for women or. Yeah, I think it's I'm for everybody. I'm definitely out there. I think they want everybody to go. It's a good fundraiser. Everybody? All yeah, right, definitely. Okay. You have to go. All right. All right. Well, we'll have Noah Beacon here with your weather when we return. <laughs> 